Marketing Your Private Practice is a podcast where you'll learn easy to implement tips and strategies to grow your business without spending all day online. I'm your host, Kathy Koliakovo, and I teach practitioners the Thrive Marketing Method to create simple and streamlined plans by focusing on long-term strategies, not just social media. Discover ways to spend less time on your marketing, attract more clients, and build the financial freedom that comes with a thriving practice. One where you have time left in your day for the people and things that matter to you. Hey, Private Practice Heroes, this is Kathy Koliakovo coming to you from my recording studio here in Nova Scotia, where they're saying we're going to be starting to get a bit of snow soon. I'll tell you, I love living here, but I am not a snow person. I am an always cold person. In fact, I just ordered some more smart wool socks because they're the only thing that keeps my feet warm. But I'm happy to put up with the snow and the bit of cold we get each winter to be able to live here. There are way more pluses to living in Nova Scotia that get outweighed by the snow and cold we get each year, which honestly is not a ton. We're number six on both lists of cities in Canada that snow the least amount each year and have snow on the ground the least amount of time too. Seriously, that is worth all the beauty we get the rest of the year. So listen, thanks for tuning into the podcast today. I really appreciate you making the time to learn from me. And today we're going to continue our theme of growing your practice or business by keeping a steady flow of leads coming in your door. We're diving into the top seven mistakes practice and business owners make with their lead generation tactics and what to do instead. And these lead generation tactics we're going to talk about today will focus specifically on lead magnets, that free thing that you give away to get in return for someone's name and email address. There are lots of other ways that you can do lead generation, by the way. You could be doing lead generation by getting out there and networking and connecting with people. You could be connecting with referral partners and sources. So just remember, lead magnets are not the be-all and the end-all of lead generation but they are one that allows most of the small business owners out there to be able to get in the game and play with the bigger players because you can do this kind of lead generation online. So if you've been listening to the last few episodes, you know how important that lead magnet is for online lead generation and how both lead magnets and lead generation are critical to the success of any practice or business. That's why I run a free training every year on creating a lead magnet, an irresistible lead magnet, because this marketing activity is so important to building a thriving business. In episode 67, we covered the seven elements needed to optimize your lead generation funnel so that you can get more leads and clients. In the next episode, number 68, we covered how you only need a small amount of content on the page where people sign up to get your lead magnet, that lead generation page you create. Because it has one goal, to get people to sign up for that enticing freebie you created for them. And that's what they get when they give you their name and email. So on this page, the less is more factor definitely works better here. And remember, you had them at click. Somewhere along the way, you entice people to get to that lead generation page. So you don't want a lot of content there. How you got them to click relies on that lead magnet, though, and how much it appeals to people, how irresistible it really is. Will they look at it, look at your information that you might have put on social media or in your email or in your newsletter? And will they think, hmm, whatever, and not be interested? Or will they think, man, I really need that because it will help me solve this problem. Okay, here's my email address. A well-executed lead generation process has an irresistible lead magnet that feeds your sales funnel. Without leads entering that funnel, it becomes very challenging to keep it active and productive. And this is why lead magnets and lead generation is something that you need to do on a consistent basis. Both of these are part of your key 10 marketing foundations that help with the long-term sustainability of your practice or business. And it's also why I put so much importance on them and run the free training I do every year on creating lead magnets. Because this marketing activity, this sales activity, is so important to building a thriving business. Every business needs clients. And one of the best ways to get there is to get leads and prospects that could turn into those clients. 
So lead generation really is just about creating a pipeline of opportunities where you can nurture folks who are really more qualified than just strangers off the street into becoming clients. And that lead generation process starts with that freebie, that lead magnet that you've created. So when your lead magnet is not ideal, it's not optimal, it's not irresistible to people, it is probably not working either. And that's what I want to help you avoid. So get your pen and paper ready. If you're going to take notes, we're going to dive a little deeper into each of the seven common mistakes people make with lead magnets. Mistakes that block you from getting that list of new people signing up, leads and prospects for your business. So we're going to start right off with mistake number one, not planning your lead magnet strategically. This mistake happens when folks simply don't take the time to plan out what they want in their lead magnet with a bigger picture view of what it can do and what its entire purpose is. Now, you want to keep your lead magnet simple and focused, but you also want it to have an end goal of what you offer people who are going to download it. What would they consider buying from you? And so, yes, we're talking about conversions here. We're talking about sales and purchases because the entire purpose of a lead magnet is to attract a lead, someone who might convert from just being somebody who grabbed your free thing and turning them into a paying client. So you have to plan that lead magnet out. Planning is everything when it comes to creating a successful lead generator. And that's what your lead magnet is. So it should be a well thought out item. It could be a piece of content. It could be a video series. It could be an email series. I've done an episode on 20 different types of lead magnets, and I'll link to that in the show notes for this episode. There's lots of things that your lead magnet could come in the form or shape of, but with all of them, it's got to serve as that initial step in this lead generation funnel. And it should naturally send people towards that core offer that you created the lead magnet for in the first place. Maybe it's booking a consult to consider getting them to buy a service. Maybe it's a paid service in the first place. Maybe you have a product. Maybe you have a group program. Whatever it is that you're looking to get more sales of and get more people to sign up for, your lead magnet is the first step. So you want to think about it kind of like the first chapter in a book. It should create curiosity and anticipation about what's to come. And it should really help them to understand how you help people, how you help them solve their problems, and that you could be the person to do this. So taking the time to plan the content in your lead magnet, format it, and have messaging that aligns with your ultimate business goals and that offer you're looking for people to buy or sign up. This is key to not making mistake number one. Mistake number two is neglecting to take the time to optimize the design of your lead magnet. Now, when I do lead magnet audits, probably about 70% of the time, the lead magnet itself, whether it's a PDF, a video, or an audio, but it happens more in the PDF types, which frankly are the easiest kind typically to create. What I find in these audits is that there's nothing in them that shows me who made it, who created, who is this person responsible for this information. There's no branding, there's no contact info, there's no company name, no logo, nothing. Your lead magnet is an extension of your brand. It's a piece of marketing collateral you've created, and it should be easily recognizable as coming from you and your business. It should contain your branding elements, things like your logo, your colors. It should match the fonts, the style of your business, the feel of your business. People should know it is coming from you. Whenever someone shares or refers to your lead magnet, they should always be able to tell where it came from because some people do give it away to friends. And if they do and the friend was interested, you want to have something in it or on it that helps that other person know where it came from. But some people save these things for years. I know I have several lead magnets that I've downloaded from people that I have kept for years because they are so valuable. If that didn't have the person's information, I would forget who they were and I would probably not think to go back to their website or go back to wherever I got the information and know who it came from if it had nothing about them on it. 
So don't miss the opportunity to leave a lasting impression and make it easy as possible for people to connect with you, whoever gets their hands on your lead magnet. And more importantly, you want them to know that if they connect with you, they can do more with you. And that leads us into mistake number three, which is having a lead magnet that is missing an about page or a bio page with a clear call to action on what they should do next. When people get your lead magnet and then they don't learn anything about you, you have missed a critical opportunity to take one more step in this new relationship you just built. They clicked. They signed up. They want your help. Let them know more about you and how you can help them even more than with this free thing they got from you. One of the items I offer in my lead magnet training sessions are a couple of about page templates that are created in Canva, and they help the students in the program use them in their own lead magnets because it helps them, number one, get their lead magnet finished faster with all the elements they need to work better. But number two, because a lot of people don't think of putting an about page or a bio page or a page with your information and tell someone, okay, now that you've got this info, what do you do next? Every lead magnet needs within it somewhere, somehow, some information about you. This is your chance to introduce yourself, to build some trust with the folks who requested it, to share your story, your qualifications, even your mission and your ideas on ways that you can help them. And that's why it also needs to have that clear call to action, that CTA that encourages those people who downloaded that lead magnet to take the next step. Maybe it's a consult, maybe it's buying something on the spot, whatever it is, you never want to leave them hanging. Always give them information about you and a call to action of what to do next. Now, mistake number four is one I've talked about before when we talk about lead generation systems and setup. You want to always make sure that your sign-up system is working. And the mistake is not checking it on a regular basis. If your lead magnet involves collecting email addresses, involves website pages with forms to sign up and automation to make it all work, you've got to make sure it's all in perfect working order on a regular basis. So I recommend checking your lead magnet sign-up system on a monthly basis when you do your monthly stats updates. This is something I teach all of my clients to do. Check your stats monthly, look at your numbers. And when you do that, that's the time that you could also take to make sure that your lead magnet system is working, that the ability for people to sign up is not broken and it's going tickety-boo. Even things like tracking the lead growth of your lead magnet can trigger you to think something is broken. If you're tracking your stats every month and you're seeing the numbers go up every month on people signing up for your lead magnet, that's great. But if it stops all of a sudden, that could mean something is broken in the system. And this is why checking it out as a practice, as a regular practice of something that you do and testing it is a better option. You don't want technical glitches such as broken forms or automation sequences that aren't doing their automated thing You don't want these things to be blocking you from getting leads, especially because I've run into this situation with many folks and they spent months, weeks, lots of time, invested time into marketing, and it wasn't working because they had something broken. When your system is broken, this can frustrate the prospects to the people trying to get your lead magnet, and it can cause them to lose trust in your brand. But more importantly, it really means that all the work you did to get that lead could be for nothing if they couldn't get the lead magnet and sign up in the first place. So your fix to mistake number four is to regularly test your sign-up process and make sure it's seamless and still working. Mistake number five is forgetting about the follow-up. So many people think, oh, they got my lead magnet. That's great. I got it all set up. That's all I need to do. Uh Uh-uh. No way. Once someone has downloaded your lead magnet, that is the beginning of a new relationship. And it is essential to continue nurturing the relationship. You want to nurture them typically with a series of emails that provides additional value and builds more of a connection with them. These follow-up emails should gradually lead your prospects closer to your core offer. This consistent communication with them once they grab the lead magnet helps keep you top of mind and helps establish trust. So be sure that you have at least, okay, I'm going to say at least three, but I really love having five emails that go out 
as a follow-up when people get a lead magnet. But depending on your business, it may be more relevant to have even more than that. It really depends on your entire purpose for your lead generation funnel, what the lead magnet's job is, and what you're looking to have people sign up for as that offer in the end run, as the end goal of that lead magnet and whole system. So that can really depend on you, your system, and your setup. So I'm not going to say you have to have X amount of follow-up emails, but I would love you to have at least three. Five would be more ideal though. Mistake number six is one that most people forget to do. Whenever I do an audit of a lead magnet or a lead generation funnel, this is where I find people are really failing when it comes to their lead generation system. And it all comes down to not promoting your lead magnet. One of the reasons folks are typically not getting signups when I do an audit is because they are simply not making any effort to promote the fact that they have this awesome lead magnet. They're assuming people will find it. And don't make me say what happens when you assume something, okay? We all know what it means. Your lead magnet will never be effective if people don't know it exists. You've got to add it to your marketing. You've got to add it into your marketing tactics to make sure that you're telling people about it, that they know it's there and that they can get it and that it's for free too. There are lots of ways to market your lead magnet and create buzz around it so that your target audience, your ideal clients out there know where to find it. And don't be shy about sharing the benefits of them downloading this and how it can solve their specific problems. This kind of content is a type of evergreen sales content. And this is something I teach folks in my Thrive Marketing Academy to have as one of their foundational types of content within their overall content marketing plan. Have these standard, steady, evergreen types of promotional posts that tell people you have a lead magnet and what it can do to help them. And if you're one of the folks in my annual lead magnet training, you're going to get a special resource with 10 ideas of where you can market your lead magnets too. Because most of the ones on this list that I have don't even involve social media. Because there are lots of ways to get out there and tell people that you have this lead magnet. So if you're listening in November of 2023, look in the show notes for where you can sign up for this training. And not only will we get your irresistible lead magnet up and running, but you'll get some ideas on where you can be marketing it too. Because not marketing your own lead magnet is really one of the top mistakes that people make. Because if you're not telling anyone it's there, who's going to do that for you? You're the CEO of your business. It's on you to make sure that this happens. People are just not going to run to Google and do a search and instantly find your lead generation page. You need to be telling folks that it's there as well. This helps you build up a bit of history and traffic on the page, which then can help other people find it. But you've got to make sure that you're promoting it yourself too. Mistake number seven is one that happens all the time, and it's really and truly coming down to overcomplicating your lead magnet. This is where people try to address too many problems or cover too much ground. And when you do that, you're honestly just overwhelming people and you're confusing people. And when you confuse them, you lose them. Your lead magnet needs to provide a quick win. I say this all the time because it is so important. It can't give them everything. You cannot give away the farm here. You've got to give them just one small quick win. Think about it as offering them just a small taste of the value that you offer. Emphasize the word small taste there, like a teeny forkful, an appetizer, if you will. Focus on solving that one specific problem or addressing one specific pain point that resonates with your ideal clients. And then that's the thing that you want to plan in this entire funnel that leads to the offer you have at the end. Keeping things simple, keeping them clear in all of your planning also helps make sure that your lead magnet is effective and memorable. And that's what makes it irresistible. When they get that quick win, that winning feeling that they experience because they got something out of that lead magnet they downloaded, that they grabbed from you, that winning feeling will come back on you. They attribute some of that win to what you did to help them. And if you're trying to solve every problem they have, you're going to complicate things, you're going to frustrate them. And more often than not, you're just going to have them now thinking instead of 
you helping them, that they're annoyed with you or worse, they move on, delete whatever it is that they got from you, throw it in the trash, and then they forget about you. There is an ideal way to deal with the added information that you want to share. And often what happens when I'm working with clients in my programs or in the training and they come with all this extra information that's going to overcomplicate the lead magnet, that's where we often take that extra stuff and put it back into mistake number five, which is not nurturing folks with a follow-up email sequence. So often what I'm telling people to do with that extra info that we take out is to use it in the follow-up emails because that's going to often help them support what the original quick win is in the lead magnet. But the other thing is you typically have that information almost ready or planned out and that makes those follow-up sequences easier to get in place. So with your lead magnet, the biggest thing about mistake number seven that I can tell you is just try to deal with one main thing in your lead magnet. Give people something that offers them that quick, easy win and doesn't overwhelm them. Your lead magnet is too important to the growth and success of your practice or business. You want people to love what you teach them and share with them. You want them to feel like you helped them solve a really important problem they had and that maybe you could do more for them and solve even more problems. Your lead magnet is one of the first steps to making this feeling happen with people that grab it and download it. And that's the end of our list here. Seven mistakes that if you avoid them will help you create a lead magnet that not only attracts new leads, but also guides them down that path toward becoming a loyal client or customer with you, converting them from being a lead to being a paying client. So what's your action step from today's lesson? I want you to go through this list of the top seven mistakes practice and business owners make with their lead mag. And I want you to honestly ask yourself how you perform on each one of them. Are you making the mistake or not? If you are, what can you do to fix those mistakes and start getting more people signing up for and using that lead magnet that you created? Getting that quick win that will lead to wins all around. So here's a quick recap of those seven mistakes again. Mistake number one is not planning your lead magnet strategically. Mistake number two is neglecting to optimize the design of your lead magnet. Number three is not including or missing an about or a bio page with clear calls to action on what to do next. Mistake number four is not checking that the sign-up system is working. And that's a really important one to make sure that you're doing. Number five is forgetting about the follow-up. You want to make sure that you're nurturing people. Mistake number six is not marketing or promoting your lead magnet so that people know it's even there. You've got to get out there and tell them about it. And number seven is overcomplicating your lead magnet with the information you're including it. It doesn't matter if it's an audio, a video, if it's an email series, if it's a PDF, it's a checklist, whatever way, format, or shape you're putting it together, you still want to make sure that it's not overcomplicated, that it's not overwhelming, and that it gives people a very quick and easy win. And if you're listening in November of 2023, I am ready to help you optimize your lead magnet and make it resistible and not make any of these mistakes with it. And we're going to do that from start to finish in two weeks. So be sure that you register for that free training that starts November 13th by clicking the link in the show notes wherever you're listening to this podcast. And hey, If you're listening after November and you missed the boat on the training, just message me on Instagram at pepperitmarketing or go to my website and just send me a message from the contact page and ask me when the next training is. I offer several throughout the year, so I know we can get you involved in something that will help you. This is Kathy Koliakovo, and I want to say thanks for tuning in today and listening to my lessons on building your email list and bringing in new leads to your business or practice. I really appreciate the time you take to listen to the podcast, and I want to leave you with this tip. Remember, to thrive in business or practice means having a lead magnet that does its job of converting leads into paying clients. And I know that you can make that happen. Stop making these seven mistakes and you'll be on your way. I'll see you next time. You can find all of our show notes and resources mentioned at marketingyourprivatepractice.com. 
Be sure to connect with me on Instagram at Pepper It Marketing and say hi. I'd love to hear any feedback you have and make sure to rate and review the podcast and hit subscribe on your favorite player so you don't miss any future episodes.